My name is Rosalind Evans. I was born in 1959 and I was born in Los Angeles, California. My mom married my stepdad and it was a lot of turmoil because it was such an abusive home living with my stepfather. I would go to school and I would think, dang, what if I call him? My mom's dead. You know, in my mind, I'm always thinking he's going to kill her. One day he's going to hit her, he's going to kill her. And I wasn't able to really concentrate in school or, or anything. I was told I was a problem child. When I was 12, my mom had me admitted into mental health inpatient um, because I tried to slash my wrist in a restroom because the fighting was going on in the house. I was told I was bipolar. I really didn't understand what it was meant. My mom didn't really follow up on it. My people didn't believe in that. They didn't believe in this mental illness stuff. I'd get the medicine for it, throw it away, go back with my normal life, and then I found alcohol. That became my medicine. It started off as fun because I could get up and dance and I could fit in a crowd and, you know, but it slowly turned into nightmares. It's a bad combination, bipolar, alcoholism. I am a miracle. I am lucky to be alive because when I don't take my meds and when I drink, I can wind up anywhere. I, I can wind up in anybody's house, you know. I have put myself in very dangerous situations. When you're homeless and you don't have anywhere to live and you're mentally ill and you're, it's hard to find proper treatment. I felt like a person, just a piece of trash, just being thrown away and kicked out of hospitals. They give you some medication and you're sent on your way with nowhere to go, um, nobody to turn to that understands you. The breakthrough for me was when I got housing. I work for Riverside University Health System Behavioral Health, and the program I work for is called HOPE. And HOPE's goal and mission and vision is to um, support those who are uh, living on the streets and help them get from uh, the street into housing, so connect them with services, and to help them get self-sufficient. So they're gonna give you a prescription and we're gonna take it to the pharmacy? Right, yeah. I was assigned a case manager, a therapist, a psychiatrist, um, a substance abuse counselor, a, a team that came together to give me support, and I didn't have that for years. There's a whole continuum of care that's happening. I've known Rosalind about a year now. I'm her peer support specialist, and I'm also her case manager on site at her apartment complex. There is transparency between myself and the rest of the treatment team, and, and if I recognize that there's an issue or a concern about what Rosalind is going through one day, I will immediately reach out and let them know that she needs some further support. And there are people that stomp on you and they want, you've been busted in the head, you've been raped, you this. Those are the kind of things that could put you down to make you say, what am I trying to do? Nothing, you know, what am I trying to prove? I've been this way all these years, I might as well stay this way. When I relapse emotionally, I was, I will stop taking my medicine and once I stop taking my medicine, then comes the drink. Forget the medicine, it's all alcohol. My mom is dead, I don't have any brothers and sisters, I'm an only child, my children are all in another state, I did not raise them. So my caregiver steps in and encourages me, Rosalind, did you take your medicine today? When I get on those lows, Rosalind, you know you have a doctor's appointment, it's important that you see the doctor. That's played an important uh, role in my life. Relapse is part of recovery sometimes, um, but it has to be looked at as more of a bump in the road. It's very important to have continuity. There needs to be a confidence on her side that there will still be that support that she needs. And it, I think that that's vital, that there's a safety net for her. And she doesn't have to go back to the streets, no matter what. When I see Rosalind, that she's like the picture of the recovery model because she just picks up and keeps going and that gives me hope. I have made a lot of mistakes, but thank God I'm not a mistake. I want my children to know that I love them very, very dearly, 
And I believe that they're at the age now that they understand that their mom is due diagnosed with a mental illness as well as an addiction of alcohol. My diagnosis is bipolar disorder. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain. I'm not in denial anymore, and it's led me to where I'm at now. It's a lifelong thing. It's not something you get your medicine and, okay, I don't need to see you no more. I, it, for my life, I will stay in treatment.